And this time the quick speed shop, check it out. Bam, digital, or digital, digital angle finder. I'm listening, watching too much Vice Grip Garage. You got the dig digitals here, but you see that? We're gonna be playing with this. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it starting right now. Just a little bit more here. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome back. It's Josh at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm working on my Dodge truck today. <laughs> Ow! Dang it! What was that? Ah. And uh, we're going to work on the rear suspension, but right now I just put new tie rod ends in this. Bam, here. And I'm checking the alignment. We're going to do a tape measure alignment. And here's how I do it. I just grab the... Take my tape measure. I just grab the outside of the center of the tread and I go to the center of the tread on the other side and I just kind of measure front to back. I uh, threaded the tie rod ends in the same count that I had before but I'm just trying to set it up ahead like like zero toe almost like maybe a almost an eighth inch of toe out and I'm not sure exactly what the toe is supposed to be on this truck but I'm going to set it to like zero to like a sixteenth to an eighth in for now because when you drive you know the tires want to push out so if I hit it, if it was set to neutral or just towed out a little bit, it seems like it would tow up more. So I'm just going to set her to a tow. So I'm at like 67 and a 16th past a quarter, whatever that is here to the tread. Let me go on the back side. And I measured the same thing in the back. They make tools for this. There's alignment racks. There's pieces you can get uh, from guys like Bleepin' Jeep. You got a thing you can hook on your wheels and measure. With a steel plate, I just do the tire method. Works good enough for what I'm doing. Right here on the back, I'm like, what do I got? 67 and a and an eighth. So right now it's towed out an eighth. I gotta give her a crank. I'm just using a pipe wrench here. It kind of tore up the paint. I just painted this, but that's alright. And I'm just gonna give her a. Let's see which way is it gotta go. I think this way. Give it a crank. Funny thing is, in these Dodges, the driver's side tie right on is fine thread. The passenger side is coarse thread, which I thought was odd. I pulled the coarse thread one out of the box first. I'm like, this ain't right. Luckily, I looked at the other one and realized that one's fine and one's not. So I'm going to, oops, am I going the wrong way here? I think I am. Hold on a minute. I got an eyeball. No, oh, that's sucking it in. There we go. So pushing down, toes it in. All right. So I want to get to like 67 and like an eighth on the front and like 67 and like 3 sixteenths on the back. So right now we're 67 and maybe, oops, where am I hooking on the tread? The tread is varying, could be a problem. Well, did that tow that out more? Let me try that again. It did, it looks like it towed it out more. I can't see. No, let's tone it in. Let's try that right there. This is the problem with the tire tread method. The tire tread is not perfectly symmetrical. It could screw you up. So now, how is this? 67 and a half. That can't be right. If I crank the tie rod in, it's got to tow that in. Why would it tow it out unless I can't see what I'm doing? Hold on a minute. Back in here in the back again. Hold on a minute. 67 in the... Huh. Makes sense at all. But going down sure seems to be... I'm going to... Take a big swing at it and see what we got here. Well, that's that's taking it in on that one, but is it taking it out on this side? What in the world? Well, no wonder the toe is off. You're telling me you got to... That's not right. They set this up so you... Oh, no. Usually on a tie rod, you spin the tie rod and the threads are separate or opposite threads, so it cranks in and cranks out. This one isn't set up that way because it's backing out the passenger side and it's cranking in the driver's side. So all it's doing is, yeah, I'm still at the same. 
60, 67 and uh, that ain't right. Nuts. So I'm cranked in quite a ways here. This is gonna screw up the, I'm gonna take it up back out around here. This is gonna screw up the back and forth of the steering wheel because essentially it's steering the wheels this way and steering them that way, depending on. So if I want to tow this in just a little bit, Oh, no, I kind of wish I didn't realize that because I set the cotter keys and everything. Dang. Over here, yeah, the course thread on this side, I don't like that at all. Why would they do that? I'm going to have to knock the tie rod end out. I'm going to put a round in that side because this side's finer. Or uh, what did I do with the tape measure now? Dang it. I don't like that at all. Yeah, we're still 67 and still towed out like an eighth, obviously, because it hasn't been doing. All I'm doing is shifting the front end back and forth. So this side, I counted when I put the tie rod end in, it had like four threads showing. It's still got about four threads showing. So I'm going to leave this side. I want to put just a touch of toe in it. I'm going to take that side out, which is coarse thread, and I'm going to spin it in one turn, put it back together, and... Uh, Means gotta undo the cotter key. Dang it! And I'm gonna get it going. I'm just gonna play with it. Like I said, I explained the process, but now I've realized what's going on here. I've got to pop that end apart. Stupid, stupid design. Like you never do that. You always have them opposite threads, so you can spin the bar and they go in and out. So you can tow it in and out. I've, I've never seen such a thing, but you know, if you worked on a Dodge, you probably knew, and I didn't know. Well, I'm gonna mess with this. I'm gonna fix this. Just now off camera real fast. The main focus of this video is we're going to go on the back end and the rear end. I've got the pinion angle set too high. I've got it like 8 degrees up and the transmission is only 3 degrees down. You want them parallel. So right now we got this one like this and the other one's like that. So i got to swing the rear end down about 5 degrees. We're going to do that with some uh, metal. Make a new wedge on top of the spring block that I already welded to the rear axle. And uh, we'll fix that. I'll, I'll straighten this out. I'm going to spin that tie rod in in one turn on that side and then just leave it. It should be close uh, to like neutral toe to like a little bit of toe in. That's pretty much good for a four, four by four. And then I'll probably have to get it aligned once I put it on the road or if it, you know, the steering wheel is all off or something. But at least now I know what's up. Okay, let's get to the rear end here. Now you'll see on the differential, I've got a uh, digital angle finder and it says 80.4 degrees right there now we're going to go to the transfer case and we're going to see what the angle is on that <clears throat> okay i set the front of the truck down so we can see the transfer case is at two degrees down oh, if i hold it that way what do we got ah Okay, so we got 8.7, 8.8. So we've got a, uh, all right, if I hold it that way, we've got 8.7. Oh, so the rear end needs to tip down. Watch this, ready? We need to tip it down, tip it down, tip it down. Oh, right about there. So what I need to do, this isn't going to sit. Is that going to sit right? Oh, all right. 8.6, that's close. Let me climb back under here. I loosened up the U-bolts, and I stuck a, a little shim under here. Let's just, get a, let's just get a start, see where we're at with our dangle, our angle of our dangle here. What are we down to? Oh, 6.1. So we came down 2 degrees. So let's see. So those shims are like... By the measuring stick, we can use math. Let's use the math. Uh, oh, yikes. So that was, I can't see. Uh, almost a quarter inch, a little over three sixteenths. So 
So we'll say a quarter inch is two and a half degrees. We'll say that because that's not quite there. We'll say it's two degrees. So I got to go, I had to go six. So I got to go three quarters of an inch altogether. But that seems like a lot. It could be. Let me uh, jack it back up and shim it. We'll just shim it to like, we'll shim it the half inch and see how that lays out. Let's see what's, what's going on here. We'll get her down. Okay. There. And jam the other one in over here. Okay. What are we at? 4.8. Uh, let me put the weight back down on it, see if that changes it. Always got to set the weight back down on it. Hopefully it'll stay together. All right, 4.6, so... We've got to go to another two and a half degrees. All right, here's what I came up with here to fix our situation. I cut some wedges out of, I don't even know what that is, probably 3 16 uh, tubing here, two and a half inch by one inch I just happened to have laying there. So I cut them out and threw a little primer on top there. So what this is going to do is going to set right on here, kirk like that, and it lines up and uh, turns our misaligned spring pad into a new spring pad that's the right angle. And the way I'm going to keep the, um, what do you call it, the spring relation pin straight, what do I do with it? Ha! I got a 5 8 bolt. Boom! That bolt goes through there and keeps these guys aligned. And all I got to do is, this sits flat on the back here, I left it a half inch short. And it's giving me a nice place to weld, but it'll also give me a nice place to clamp. I'll just get a clamp here, and we'll clamp the back of it, get this lined up the best we can. Clamp it here, tack it in each corner. There's a nice bevel here. The way the original pad was rolled over in this, it'd be give me nice penetration there to weld on. But we're just going to tack four corners, and then roll the rear end back under the truck and set it down. And I think if we get in with a, like a half a degree, with that, that digital gauge is pretty... Uh, Pretty sensitive so if we can get this within like a half degree say the transmission is 2.2 degrees and this is like 2.5 that's going to be way more than good enough so uh, that's what we're going to do so let me get the welder out and uh, we'll tack these suckers on there and roll it back under there and see what it looks like all right we got it clamped on here and just real fast before I do this I'm just going to check the angle gauge uh, we'll see, oh, we'll see how we shake out, that's 2.2, and I just want to compare it to the other side, which you're not going to be able to see, I just want to see how close to being accurate my things are. This one's close, it's 2.5 now to 2.2, which is pretty close, but I can tack it, I'm going to tack it, uh, in place where I want it to be, and then that way it'll match. Man, this thing is, uh, this angle finder is awesome. So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll tack it in the back and then I'll just kirk, lift the front up just a little bit till I get to like 2.2, and then I'll make it match on this side, and then uh, these things will be dialed in perfect to each other. And hopefully our angles will be good. Um, you know, it's is with is leaf springs, they move all around, but we'll, uh, this thing will be way, way, way closer. It was out by six and a half degrees. So if we can get within half a degree, we'll be good to go. Okay. Well, I need... It already moved a little bit. So say two four. 
It's 2-4. What I got over here? Still got 2-2 two, two over there. Two two, perfect. Two three, close enough. All right, got that sucker tacked on there. Pull my pin out, my pin is good. Okay, now I can roll the rear end back in the position. How do we get so far out of whack here? Oh, shoot. Hold on a minute. Oh, shoot. Take my bolt out. Oh no. How do we get so far out of whack? Must have steered with that tire over there, apparently. Hold on a minute. Easy. Aha, there we go. That side's in, driver side's in. There we go. Boom. Hold that guy level against the bolt surface. 3.3, 3.4, 3.3. I'll just get a bunch of 3.8, 3.9, what did that say? Three. So we got to go like a half a degree. I could cut them back tack welds and lift up the uh, plate on both sides just a hair. Man, it's, it's so close. I mean, I usually do these with a mechanical protractor, and I'm sure it's never been this accurate before. So maybe it's good enough, or I can just, like I said, take that little bit out, take a half a degree out, but man, half a degree is, I mean, that's, that's a half a degree. I'm rocking it just barely. That's like, it's like a little bit wider than a sheet of paper. Man, this is, I almost got to think that's close enough. It's within half a degree. That's probably close enough. All right, bam, I hit the uh, pieces with the grinder and I threw a little black paint on them there and we're ready to roll. And uh, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of grease on the bottom of the spring, or actually on the top of the pad to grease this up. And like I alluded to earlier, I'm gonna make a plate. There's a plate that goes on top of these that I had that was all rusty from the original things. Because if you look here, I don't know if you can see it, but the if you put just put the U-bolts on with no pad on top of this, they push on the corners of the spring into the thing there, and these are meant to sit with a spacer on them and pick up a little bit. And usually they got like a little indentation and like a raised port, which I might just put a couple little pieces of round rod and just tack them to the upper plate after this is all assembled. And uh, I also need to get longer U-bolts because picking it up in the front there, the U-bolt, I just held it up before and it was going to be too short. So I'm going to have to get longer U-bolts at the uh, spring store. It's a place to make springs and up in the city and I can, they got U-bolts of all different shapes and sizes. So I'll have to get some new U-bolts next week. But uh, we can roll this back under here and at least put a couple threads on, I think. Ah, just greased myself. Just going to grease these up with a little bit of wheel bearing grease. Spread it on here just a little little thin bit. When I originally put those springs on this here, the uh, four inch rough country suspension lift. Oh shoot, there's a dang, there's a weld splatter chunk I just felt with my finger. 
Of course, I smeared the grease on it, so now i got to clean that off right before we... I don't want that sitting on the spring. Let me get a chisel and knock that off. Got it. All right. Now, all right, bam, the rear end is back on the uh, spring pads, and we got our angles all straightened out. Now, like I said, these U-bolts are going to be too short now, so i got to get, I think, ones that are at least an inch longer. But I am making the plates up here. I've got some 2-inch flat stock. It's like 3 16 I bored it out three-quarter holes to go around the nuts. I'm just going to cut it here into 6-inch pieces, and then the U-bolts will sit like here and here, and then I'll uh, get some like round stock. I've got this round stack over here, something like this. Maybe even smaller. Here we go. Smaller piece here. And what I'll do is, once I get it all finished up, I'll just lay the round stock on here and tack it. Tack it there, and that'll just keep the U-bolts from trying to slide off. It'll like mimic. I don't have one of the original pieces, but it'll mimic like the, the stock uh, toppers that were on here originally. All right, there we go. Just got the plates down in there. You can see how they go under the U-bolts and let the U-bolts hold down on the flat and not on the corners like they were. They're uh, two inches wide instead of two and a quarter, so it gives a little room there. Like I said, I don't know if I can even I can hold this up and show you. It's uh, only going to get on a couple of threads there, so I'm going to have to get some U-bolts that are about another inch longer. So I'm happy with fixing that. Got the pinion angle dialed in. Like I said, it's within, I don't know, half to three quarters of a degree and barely moves around. So it's way more than good enough when the truck gets loaded, unloaded. I mean, the rear end does this while you're driving, but it's it's almost perfect right now. It was six and a half degrees off. So now it's within less than around half a degree. So that's, that's good enough for what this truck will be. Um, I got my tie rod back in, adjusted. I painted that too and set it to about a 16th toe in. And I'll have to play around with that. i also been tinkering on the engine. Um, slowly, I put the plug wires on. I made some David Freiberger uh, spark plug wire looms out of zip ties. Got them all loomed up. I've been putting fittings in. Uh, I haven't showed you yet the gauges, but I, I picked up two electric gauges, uh, electric oil pressure and electric temperature sensor. Even though this truck has a temperature gauge, but it just had an oil pressure idiot light. So I put in a, a, a T fitting here, uh, eighth inch MPT brass T brass line, and then a brass T and that big knob sticking off the back. That's the sender unit for the electric gauge, and then the rusty one of the three prongs is the idiot light for the for the gauge. There, I had to use a 90 degree fitting to get the the new oil pressure sending unit to clear the distributor. But now I can set up that. I hooked up the PCV valve here, new grommet in there, PCV valve line to the to the bottom side of the carburetor. I've got a new vacuum fitting to the new brake booster. I'm just waiting on one. I gotta go find one fitting here. I think this is quarter inch, and I gotta go up to half inch, half to quarter adapter, or find a half inch threaded nipple for that because the heater hoses are uh what is this three quarter heater hose to the bottom and three quarter off the top but it changes halfway through there's a blend valve here for the heat so you can shut the heat off in the summertime and it's five eighths hose on the engine side and then this blend valve but this valve is stuck and it's uh i gotta try to free it up or i'll have to find another one or i might just forego it for now and just get a adapter they go from three quarter to five eighths and just run, just run the heat through the heater box all the time. Like a, a lot of cars are that way; they don't have a shutoff valve on it. So I might just do that, eliminate that, just zip tie this cable which runs the blend valve. Just zip that, tie that to the hose, and just let it circulate all the time. So there's still a ton, a ton of work to do on this truck. The weather's changing. I wanted to have it on the road in the fall. It, it's not going to be on the road probably to the winter, and I don't want to drive it in the salt. So I'll probably just have it out and about on the property and then we'll start putting miles on it in the spring but that's it for today a little bit longer one working on setting up that pinion angle that's really important so you don't have driveline vibrations to get that pinion angle pretty much parallel so uh, 
I had it screwed up from before, but we've made some nice little wedges and got her fixed up and it should be good to go now. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and do all the things down here and uh, leave a comment, leave a like, and we'll see you next time. Working on the Dodge again, I'm sure. And uh, let's get this thing buttoned up so I can work on something else. Thanks for watching. Bam. We'll see you next time here at the Quick Stoop Beach Shop.